Hey there, everyone. Welcome back to Utility Sports. In today's video, we're going to be focusing on the Indiana Pacers, who currently sit 13th in the Eastern Conference today. I'm recording this with a record of 19 and 36. It's been a little bit of a struggle in Rick Carlisle's first season back as the Indiana Pacers head coach. And this was foreseeable. I talked about this in the offseason that this team just didn't fit what his schematic design is for an NBA roster and for NBA games. He's someone who likes things certain ways. And quite frankly, the Pacers didn't have that when they hired him. So I'm wondering if they did have plans to actually try and overhaul this roster and try and remake what they were. Of course, they had been tied to Ben Simmons in the past. And I think now with what's happened in the last week, it's really fair to look at this team as some team that's going to be looking to rebuild and really retool this roster. I don't think that they want to take the route of the Oklahoma City Thunder, where it's going to be a long five, six, seven year rebuild, because I think that would really hurt their fan attendance and overall market ability in that market. But considering what they are, they are definitely going to be making some moves that do consider them to be a rebuilding team. If you guys are new to Utility Sports, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well. Pacers fans, we're super excited to have you watching our videos. Of course, huge day yesterday, trading uh, Karis LeVert. Actually, that'll be two days ago. Now, yesterday from the day I'm recording this. Uh, and then also use code UTILITY20 for 20% off plus free shipping worldwide at manscaped.com. Again, that is code UTILITY20. And without further ado, let's get into it here. And the reason we're making this video is because Karis LeVert has already been dealt. Like I mentioned in the open, Pacers received 2022 first round pick from Cleveland, a 2022 second round pick via Houston, Ricky Rubio's expiring contract, all four guard Karis LeVert. And I think they did really good in that trade. Karis LeVert, someone uh, who has been interesting uh, around the league for a lot of different teams, of course, with trade from Brooklyn to Indiana. I think Indiana did a really good job getting off of Oladipo right in time with all of his injury history to bring in Karis LeVert. They tried him out, it didn't really fit with Rick Carlisle, as most players end up doing with Rick Carlisle. Of course, you look back at his track record, uh, he definitely has a little bit of favoritism in his blood, and Karis LeVert was not on the right end of that, obviously, in his time in Indiana. Uh, and then you also look at what he didn't help this team with. He's kind of a little bit more of a ball stopper, and I think they did a pretty good job getting off that contract here, sending him to Cleveland, and they were able to bring in some valuable picks. A pick that's going to be in the top 35 from Houston, of course, a first rounder from Cleveland. Gives you some real draft flexibility for a franchise that hasn't picked in the top nine since, I believe, 1979. Uh, or maybe it's 1989. I might be off by a decade there. Uh, excuse me on that. But either way, uh, they haven't been in the top nine picks for quite some time. The last time they were in the top 10, they picked Paul George. So they do pretty good in that realm. When they're there, they just haven't been there for a while. And that's a testament to how good they've been as an organization and as a team and as a team that doesn't like to bottom out. But I think now is finally the time. You've already traded a big chip in Karis LeVert, got in some decent assets. And this year is a really great draft class to tank out for because there's four guys in the top uh, that are going to be phenomenal locks as all-stars, in my opinion. And there's also a ton of other players in the top 10 that I think could make runs at all-star all -star appearances as well. Very talented draft class. And this Karis LeVert trade really has accelerated everything into a question where Pacers GM Chad Buchanan probably looks and says, where do we go from here? And for me, that is moving toward a rebuild. And you know, guys, I'm not someone who's super fond of the whole Oklahoma City rebuild where you get a ton of first round picks and you're kind of waiting on the lottery, not really bringing in talented players. I think the Pacers want to kind of do a little bit of both here. I think they want to bring in some talented young guys who can help this team stay competitive now, put fans in the seats, but still jockey and position themselves for a top pick, not only in this draft, but perhaps in a couple future ones as well. And that's going to be by examining what their trade options are for forward DeMontis Sabonis, center Miles Turner, and also the other key contributors they have on this team. They have a few of them. When you look at guys like Torrey Craig, Jeremy Lamb, Justin Holiday. So what I've done here for this video is I've mocked up three trades that I think the Pacers should strongly consider doing that I think are actually fairly realistic uh, and reasonable. Of course, I had made a trade video on the Cleveland Cavaliers the day of the actual trade they made for Karis LeVert. And I talked about them trading Rubio 2022 first and Houston second rounder. Of course, that's the package that Indiana got. I had not gotten the right player in that, but I think that I am right on track with what some of the available packages are gonna be for bigger time trades. And these are three trades that could really shape Indiana's future. So without further ado, let's jump into trade number one here. And it's a three teamer. Uh, and I think there's a lot of interest here from Washington centered around forward DeMontis Sabonis. I think Sabonis is someone who's probably going to have a little bit of interest by specific teams, not by a ton of teams, but by specific ones that are going to bid each other up a little bit. 
But at the end of the day, I think Washington's going to be his biggest pursuer, especially when you consider that they do have Bradley Beal. They're under contract. Uh, they want him to opt in. They want him to be a part of their long-term future. And they have to sell to him that Washington's going to be a place where you can win. And DeMontis Savonis as a running mate is going to be what they try. They try bringing in Spencer Dinwiddie. It looked like it was going to be ahead at the start of the year, but Dinwiddie and Beal really haven't uh, connected very well and very often this season there in Washington. So this is a deal that really does make sense for all parties involved. We'll start with Indiana here. You're trading DeMontis Sabonis. That's the only player going up from you in this deal. You bring in Dwight Powell from the Dallas Mavericks, someone who Rick Carlisle loves, by the way. Uh, I'm a Mavericks fan myself, so I know how much he really, really loves Dwight Powell. He thinks Dwight Powell would be a perfect center there in Indiana as a big role man, someone who's also been able to step out to the three-point line a little bit more this season. Uh, has shown some progression year in, year out. He's been a little bit better of a rim protector, and he's come back well from that Achilles injury. So I think he is someone who Rick Carlisle would love to have on this roster. You also bring in Rui Hachimura. He's the big young player that you're getting in this deal from Washington. Uh, someone who out of Gonzaga hasn't necessarily been the best player in the NBA by any stretch of the imagination, but does have a solid role in the league as a big, big time four. Uh, can guard multiple positions, probably two through four. Uh, and then also very, very solid in the mid-range area. Gives you a more, more of an offensive perimeter option than what Sabonis has been. Of course, Sabonis, one of the better players in the league, though. Uh, it's hard to move on from a guy like him, but when you get a young guy like Rui Hachimura, and you also bring in a center like Dwight Powell, who Rick Carlisle just obviously loves, that already is a pretty good building block in terms of what the salary is coming in. You also get in a 2022 second round pick from the Dallas Mavericks, which has some value in itself because it's going to be probably a top 45 pick. Uh, gives you a little bit more flexibility on top of the picks you've already gotten from the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Karis LeVert trade. You get a 2022 first unprotected from Washington, which is really the massive piece here because they're a team right now that's looking like a play-in team at best. Perhaps that is a lottery pick, which is massive. Then you also bring in a 2025 first round lottery protected pick from Washington here as well. So you do get the two first round picks. And I think Indiana is going to be shopping DeMontis Sabonis in a similar fashion for what the Magic did with Nikola Vucevic, where they got two firsts and a young player in Wendell Carter. I think the Pacers here are going to try and do the same thing, two firsts and a young player in Rui Hachimura. Uh, I think it makes sense. The Wizards get Sabonis and Trey Burke. He ends up going out for salary cap reasons. Burke does. Uh, and then Sabonis comes in, uh, and he's the big-time piece that they're getting. I think Trey Burke could actually have a decent role there in Washington, too, as a bench spark plug. Uh, I think they're really missing Ish Smith this year, who played in that role for them last season. Uh, they had hoped Aaron Holiday would be that for them, and it just hasn't panned out the way that uh, they had expected. Trey Burke, I think, could actually be a nice little implement piece for them. And then the Mavericks get Spencer Dinwiddie, a team that's looking for another ball handler and, and creator off the bench, and that's where Spencer Dinwiddie's been best in his career as a bench scorer bench playmaker coming in uh, and handling the basketball. And I think that's what Dallas Babley needs when you consider the fact that they, uh, of course, have Luka Doncic, Shalen Brunson, their starting lineup, but they need another guy who can come off the bench and really handle the basketball and take the load off of those two for a, a few more minutes a game throughout the regular season. And I think Spencer Dinwiddie is someone who can do that now. Do I have some questions about what his fit next to Brunson and Luka would be in games? Sure, of course I do. Uh, that's a little bit of a concern to me. But at the end of the day, Mavericks still need another cook in the kitchen. I think that Spencer Dinwiddie is someone who would make sense there. And I don't think Indiana has a lot of interest in locking themselves into a contract like his that's three years, about $51 million. Uh, I just don't see them wanting to do that. So I think Dallas makes sense as a team to jump in in a three-team deal here to try and bring in Spencer Dinwiddie. So I just don't see the Pacers having very much interest in him. Moving on to trade two now, of course, they're going to be on different players. So here... The Pacers are sending out Miles Turner. And this is an interesting one to me because right now he's having a little bit of a foot injury issue. He's 25 years old. He's an extremely valuable player, 3 and D big, can space out to the three-point line, can protect the rim extremely well. Uh, he's basically a block party by himself. And here for the Pacers, again, you're trying to bring in assets and talented young players. So it's going to be a mix of both here again. You bring in Mason Plumlee for salary cap reasons, probably doesn't even play a minute for Indiana. And then you bring in P.J. Washington, who is an extremely intriguing young player for me coming in from Charlotte. He's only averaging three less points a game right now than Miles Turner. So I know looking at this, Pacers fans might say, whoa, we're not even getting a first round pick for Miles Turner. You're getting someone who is well worth the first round pick in P.J. Washington. In fact, I think Charlotte would have serious internal discussions about, hey, do we really need Miles Turner? We do have P.J. Washington. Now, I think ultimately 
Turner is an upgrade over P.J. Washington, but I think there is going to be some discussions there for Charlotte about what their long-term window looks like. Right now, they're in the, in the ninth spot in the Eastern Conference. So Charlotte maybe doesn't want to hit the panic button on a younger player, uh, but I do think Miles Turner would make them better. They also give up Vernon Carey here, someone who could be another athletic big who I think really fits what Rick Carlisle wants to do with the center position. Gogo Batadze, I, I said he was one of the biggest losers of last offseason because of Rick Carlisle being hired in Indiana. I just firmly believe that to be true. I think Vernon Carey Jr. Uh, is more of a fit in terms of what Rick Carlisle wants at that position. So I, th I think he would actually find himself in a role rather quickly there in Indiana. And then you get three second round picks, 2022, 2024, and a 2026 one, which gives you a little bit more flexibility uh, in terms of making some trade offers on draft night. Because you have a ton of second round picks you can attach into deals, uh, implement a little bit more value here and there, move yourself up. Uh, or if you move down a couple of times as well, you stack up a ton of assets and then maybe make a bigger deal trying to really turn the ship around quickly in Indiana. Again, it's all about flexibility and versatility. And I think Indiana's maxing that out here, bringing in young guys like PJ Washington, Rui Hachimura, and a ton of draft assets. And then, of course, the third trade here, this one trading a little bit lesser profile players, Jeremy Lamb, who's on an expiring deal, and then Torrey Craig as well go to Toronto in this. The Raptors are a team that badly needs a little bit more wing depth, uh, and badly needs a little bit more bench scoring. And I think Jeremy Lamb brings that for them and Torrey Craig brings them a little bit more perimeter defensive uh, skill set that I think could be valuable come playoff time because the Raptors right now are seventh in the Eastern Conference. They're trying to hold on to that spot. And I think Jeremy Lamb really does implement what they need. Uh, right now, the Raptors have a very balanced scoring attack across their top four. When you look at guys like Gary Trent Jr., who's been an absolute flamethrower as of late. Uh, you also have uh, OG Ananobi, who's taken another, another step forward. Fred Van Vliet, Pascal Siakam, those uh, four players have all been great. I still think you just need another guy off the bench, so that's Jeremy Lamb. Then they end up giving up Isaac Vonga here and two second round, or two second round picks go to Indiana. So again, you're not trading a, a high profile player here in Indiana, but you are getting off of Tory Craig, who probably doesn't help you much when you're looking at a rebuild and you're getting rid of Jeremy Lamb, who's on an expiring contract to bring in two second round picks, gives you again, more flexibility, more versatility down the road, especially when you consider the 2023 and 2025, you're loading up on a ton of draft assets here. Uh, and then you also get the thunder involved here. You do send out a 2028 20, second rounder. But that is to not have to take in Goran Dragic's money. It just makes everything more difficult. Uh, they didn't have a true pathway of doing that without getting Oklahoma City involved here. Uh, and to only give up a 2028 20, second rounder to save yourself about $20 million and stay away from the luxury tax. I think that does make a lot of sense here for Indiana, which leads us here to kind of an overlook at everything that happened here. Karis LeVert out the door, of course. That one is already completed, finalized. That is a real NBA trade. The rest of these are projections on what I think could happen. DeMontis Sabonis goes out. Miles Turner goes out. Jeremy Lamb out the door, as well as Torrey Craig. And what you acquire here is an overall asset haul of 10 total draft picks, which is massive. In four trades, to get 10 draft picks. That's huge. You also bring in some nice young players like Rui Hachimura. You also get Vernon Carey. P.J. Washington, you got a nice asset haul here. The 10 picks, the three young players, you got to like it. If you're in Indiana, you're also going to have some salary cap flexibility going into the future with all these expiring contracts like Plumlee and Ricky Rubio. This is a great way for Indiana to reset the table, move toward the future, and quickly accelerate what could be a very good rebuild for this team. Indiana does great in trades. I firmly believe that. Even looking back at the Paul George trade, they did well getting Oladipo and Sabonis in that deal. And I think right now they're really set up for a lot of success when you consider what they could do in these in these styled trades. You get 10 total picks, uh, a few of them being first rounders, some of them being high seconds. Gives you a lot of flexibility. You get off of some bad contracts. You get off of some players who aren't going to help you win. You still have Malcolm Brogdon to trade as well in the future. Uh, I don't think he'll get traded this year just because of his extension and everything. Uh, but I do think they bring him into the offseason, probably look to trade him near the draft uh, and really, really build up what this team could be quickly. Uh, and you put yourself in a position to move up the draft board this year. Uh, we do have some mock drafts on the channel, so make sure you guys go check those out as well at players the Pacers could be targeting on draft night. If you guys did enjoy today, make sure to leave a like, subscribe as well if you're new. It's awesome having your guys' support on the channel. You guys are absolutely great. Lovely viewers, again, use code UTILITY20 for 20% off, plus free shipping at manscaped.com. Thanks again so much for watching, Pacers fans. Hit that subscribe button, and we'll catch you in the very next Utility Sports video.